with the help of this diagram let's try to understand cardiac cycle cardiac cycle is basically the sequence of electrical and mechanical events which happen in heart in one beat so we have to study when we are talking about the cardiac cycle the electrical activity and the mechanical activity which is happening so if we talk about electrical activity so just let me draw a schematic diagram of heart if we talk about the electrical activity say this is sa node what happens that the sa node generates a signal which travels in the conducting pathways to the av node and from there via the bundle of his and purkinje fibers it bundle of his uh, the left and right branch and then the purkinje fibers it spreads to the heart so electrical activity starts at sa node spreads in atria right for that we get p wave and after this electrical activity there is contraction of atria and then as the electrical impulse spreads in the ventricle we get the ventricular contraction and then ventricular relaxation in the meantime when the ventricles are contracting the atria also relax so first thing is not to confuse between two things that the electrical activity and the mechanical activity mechanical activity that is the contraction occurs due to the electrical activity so let us see that uh, what are the these uh, mechanical activity and what is the timeline in which they are occurring so first is as i said that atrial contraction because of the p wave so one heart beat if we say that uh, the heart rate is uh, 75 beats per minute okay if the heart rate is 75 beats per minute the duration of one heart beat will be how much that will be we can calculate by in 60 seconds 75 beats are happening so in 1 second or sorry in 1 uh, beat will happen in how many seconds that will be 60 divided by 75 it will come to 0.8 seconds so taking that uh, the heart rate is 75 beats per minute then the duration of single cardiac cycle will be 0.8 seconds so we will take it as an example to see that what will be the duration of various events in cardiac cycle so initially as i said that there is atrial contraction so that lasts for 0.1 second okay then in the rest 0.7 seconds of this 0.8 second the atria relax okay now in the meantime there is overlap basically with the mechanical actions of the atria and the ventricles there is overlap okay so when this atria is uh, so when this atria is contracting that is 0.1 second the ventricles are relaxing so here it will be ventricles are relaxing during this time that is the diastole okay so that is ventricular diastole and just after the atrial contraction is over ventricles start contracting okay so here we will see ventricular contraction which lasts for 0.3 seconds and then again the ventricular diastole starts okay so this ventricular diastole you see it is overlapping the atrial diastole as well as atrial contraction right and this lasts for 0.5 seconds so with this let us see what are the various phases of cardiac cycle now here broadly we have uh, said the phases of cardiac cycle that is the atrial systole and atrial diastole which is overlapped by ventricular systole and ventricular diastole so these are parallel events which are occurring they are not in series not one after the other but to understand actually what is happening within the heart in these phases we divide this cardiac cycle phases into sub phases so what are these sub phases these sub phases we divide it into two whether they are occurring during ventricular systole or ventricular diastole and uh, remember that uh, if i only use the word systole and diastole and do not attach atria and ventricle as the prefix to that then by default it means ventricular systole and ventricular diastole so ventricular systole it includes isovolumetric contraction 
then there is phase of rapid ejection then there is phase of slow ejection so during systole ejection of blood from the ventricle is going to take place and during diastole filling of ventricle will occur and the phases in ventricular diastole is uh, proto diastole very small phase okay proto diastole then there is isovolumetric relaxation then the phase of uh, rapid filling then there is phase of slow filling and then there is second phase of rapid filling which is due to the atrial contraction we saw that how ventricular diastole is overlapped with atrial contraction so these are the phases of the cardiac cycle and from where to start the cycle so let us see in this graph you see the ecg because the electrical activity precedes the mechanical activity we are starting with the p wave okay so here the p wave is happening so first what we are seeing is atrial contraction right and just after atrial contraction ventricular systole is going to start so let us see one by one what is happening in these phases so just uh, let me rub this and uh, we will start with the atrial systole or atrial contraction and again come back to atrial contraction at the end of the cardiac cycle so initially there is p wave okay so this is the p wave right and this leads to atrial contraction now during atrial contraction what will happen is let me draw the atria and ventricle as two boxes okay which have valves in between and what are these valves actually between the atria and ventricle there is a bicuspid or tricuspid valve right bicuspid valve on the left side and tricuspid valve on the right side and between the ventricle and the vessel which is coming out of the ventricle there is semilunar valve and uh, on the left side it is aortic valve and on the right side it is pulmonary valve so this is the region of valve and here there is valve now when atria contracts what happen that this valve is open and because of the contraction the blood flows very fast it is like a push to the blood which is present in atria into the ventricle okay so that is the atrial contraction or the rapid filling phase the second rapid filling phase of the cardiac cycle now by this time the electrical activity actually has depolarized the ventricle and so the ventricle contraction starts now as the ventricle start contracting what happens that these valves shut okay so this valve which are present in the atria and ventricle close and this produces first heart sound okay so before the start of the ventricular contraction or the end of the ventricular contraction there is first heart sound and if we see in this diagram you see here this is the atrial contraction right and this is the start of the ventricular systole here we have drawn first heart sound fine now these semilunar valves are already closed that we'll see before that uh, in the cardiac cycle when they become closed but uh, at the beginning of the ventricular contraction we see now the both valves are closed the bicuspid tricuspid valves or the av valves and the semilunar valves so with the contraction of the ventricles what happens that suddenly the pressure in the ventricles rises to a very high level and because the valves are closed the volume doesn't move out so that is the reason that this phase is known as isovolumetric contraction so let us see it in the graph for so the pressure changes which occur in ventricle and the volume changes which are occurring in ventricle in this phase so this phase is the isovolumetric contraction you see this is the ventricular pressure in the diastole ventricular pressure is 0 mm mercury but in the phase of isovolumetric contraction it rises very steeply from 0 to 80 mm mercury okay so the change in ventricular pressure is from 0 to 80 mm mercury what about the volume change in the ventricle will there be any volume change no there will be no volume change so you see that uh, right now there is no volume change in isovolumetric contraction this this plant and the amount of blood which has come into the ventricle by the end of ventricular relaxation is uh, 130 ml approximately 
so that is known as the end diastolic volume that is the volume present in the ventricle by the end of the diastole so that is 130 ml and I, in isovolumetric contraction it is you see not changing so name itself is suggesting isovolumetric volume is same fine now with the rise of pressure of uh, ventricles to 80 mm mercury what happens that these semi lunar valves which are there and uh, when we are talking about 80 mm mercury we are talking about the left side of the heart left ventricle right so at 80 mm mercury these semi lunar valves open why so because at this point the ventricular pressure becomes greater than that of the pressure in the aorta what is the diastolic pressure in aorta it is 80 mm mercury right so as soon as the ventricular pressure becomes little bit more than that it pushes open the semi lunar valves and uh, because of this extreme rise in pressure there is so much push to the flow of the blood that it flows very fast out of the ventricles into the aorta so that is why this phase is known as rapid ejection phase right rapid ejection phase and you see that the pressure is still rising not so much as that in case of isovolumetric contraction but it is still rising and reaches up to 120 mm mercury what about the volume change yes as i told that it is a rapid ejection phase volume you see is falling very fast it is a steep fall in volume in the ventricle then what happens the ventricle keeps on contracting but because there is ejection of the blood this pressure you see starts falling and because of this falling pressure the volume amount of volume which moves out also decreases so this is the phase of slow ejection okay slow ejection and by the end of both phases of rapid ejection and slow ejection how much amount of ventricular blood has moved out of ventricles approximately 70 ml and this is the stroke volume right then uh, how much amount of blood is still present in the ventricles not entire 130 ml which is present in the ventricles is thrown out some amount is still present in the ventricles and it is basically 1 130 minus 70 and that is 50 ml and because this amount is present at the end of the systole so it is known as this 50 ml is known as an systolic volume fine so that was about the phases of systole before we end this let us see that how much is the duration of each phase in systole so we saw that there are three phases isovolumetric contraction then there is a rapid ejection and slow ejection and uh, the total ventricular systole duration is 0.3 seconds so simple to remember how i do is that one isovolumetric contraction is 0.05 second just keep on adding 0.05 to this okay so this is 0.1 second and slow ejection so this is of longest duration so it is 0.15 seconds so these are the duration of various phases of ventricular systole coming to ventricular diastole so what is said is that during ventricular systole 70 ml of blood has moved out of the ventricles and these uh, valves are closed that is the atrioventricular valves are closed and these semi lunar valves are open now after contraction the ventricles start relaxing okay so with relaxation the pressure in ventricles is going to fall right so you see here here right so in this diagram i have not shown proto diastole but as soon as it starts relaxing the pressure falls such that it becomes immediately less than that of the aorta and what happens that the aortic valves or the semi lunar valves actually close so here you see what we saw that in uh, rapid ejection phase there was rise in pressure and the pressure started falling in slow ejection itself and then just as the ventricles start relaxing these semi lunar valves close so again that is happening at what pressure that is again happening at 80 mm mercury so little less than 80 mm mercury they will close then start proper phases of ventricular relaxation that is isovolumetric relaxation rapid filling slow filling which is also known as diastasis and 
the phase of second rapid filling or what is caused by atrial systole. Okay. So isovolumetric relaxation, as the name suggests again, that volume is constant. Iso volume. Volume is constant. And why it is constant? You see, both walls are closed, AV walls as well as the semilunar walls. By the way, the closure of the semilunar walls produces second heart sound. So you see, at the end of the ventricular systole, we get second heart sound. At the beginning of ventricular systole, first heart sound. At the end of ventricular systole, second heart sound. So both the walls are closed. Hence, there is no change in the volume within the ventricles. But what about pressure? As there was rise in pressure steeply in isovolumetric contraction, there is a steep fall in pressure in isovolumetric relaxation. So you see here that right, this is the steep fall in isovolumetric relaxation. And again, the pressure comes to zero. So the minimum pressure in ventricles is zero. The pressure in ventricle ranges from zero to 120 millimeter mercury. It is not like that in aorta, where it ranges from 80 minimum and 120 maximum. Okay. So with isovolumetric relaxation, pressure comes back almost to zero. And as that happens, these AV walls are going to open. Right. So how it will become? These walls are going to open. And you see that during this whole time when the ventricle was contracting, what was happening in atria? It was relaxed, right? So, all the blood which was returning from various parts of the body, it was entering into the atria. So, this atria was full of blood. So, as soon as these AV walls open, there is sudden gushing of blood into the ventricles from the atria and because of this sudden gushing, there is production of third heart sound. So during this rapid filling phase, there is third heart sound production. But you see that despite filling of the ventricles, so you see here what will be the ventricular volume change, it is going to rise steeply, ventricular volume is rising steeply. But the pressure change will not be much. Why? Because the ventricles are still relaxing and physiologically there should not be much pressure change. Because if that happens then these walls are going to close and the filling of the ventricles will be compromised. So actually that is a disorder known as diastolic dysfunction. So pressure should not rise and you see here in the entire ventricular diastole pressure is almost up to 0 millimeter mercury. Fine. So that was about rapid filling. Then what happens? Then there is a phase of slow filling in which whatever blood is coming from the veins enter into atria and because the valves are open, they keep on entering into the ventricle. So it is like a direct pathway from vein to atria to the ventricle. So that is known as diastasis or slow filling phase. And uh, you see that in this phase, because slow filling is a thing, what is happening to the ventricular volume? It is rising, but not that much, right? And finally, there is a phase of atrial contraction. So you see till here, there is a slow filling. Finally, there is the phase of atrial contraction because the new impulse has started. It will lead to a little bounce in the ventricular volume, right? So that is the second rapid filling. And as in the first rapid filling, I told you that sudden gushing of blood creates third heart sound. This atrial contraction, again, there is a small gushing of blood from the atria to the ventricle. It leads to fourth heart sound. But physiologically, remember, we hear only first heart sound and second heart sound. Fine. And uh, then again, what will happen? The next beat will start. At the end of the atrial systole, again, the AV walls are going to close. So before we end, just a note on the durations of the uh, phases of the ventricular diastole. What are the durations? Again, they are simple to remember. As we saw in uh, ventricular systole, ventricular diastole has... Phases, isovolumetric relaxation. Protodiastole is there, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just omitting it here. Isovolumetric relaxation is there. Then there is phase of rapid filling, then slow filling, and again there is phase of atrial systole or second rapid filling. So we said that ventricular diastole duration is 0 0.5 seconds, right? So what I will do is except this slow filling, this phase is slow. For other phases, I will just write 0 0.1 second, 0 0.1 second, 0 0.1 second, right? And this slow phase, it is just 
0.2 second, the remaining 0.2 second. So those are the durations of various phases of the cardiac cycle. So that was all about the cardiac cycle. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.